Hi. I'm good. Yeah? Yeah. Good morning. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sleeping alright? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, you know, it's, I don't know, I've, I've noticed that um, some of the things that, you know, uh, you uh, have in a lockdown and all these sort of kind of things, they, they mess with you a little bit, like, you know, uh, you sort of, Sometimes you get good night sleeps and other times it's not because you're... Yeah, I mean they do say about mental health and yeah. you know, things are affecting everyone, so um, yeah. But we can pray, God is there, we can, we can get into that peace. But sometimes it takes a little while to get to that place, because eh? mm -hmm. we've got to process stuff. Well, you know... When it comes to praying, and it's not just, I'm not talking about, you know, oh God, can I hear my prayer, but, you know, prayers that actually bless people, heal people, bring healing yeah, yeah. into people. You know, we used to have that in church, when people come and you can have people come forward after the service is finished for praying for healing. Yeah. And there are many testimonies that come out of that. Yes. We're missing that. I'm missing that, you know, yes. the, the activity of God yeah, is, yeah. is, you know, a little bit on the downside when you are locked down and... Yeah, but I think there must be a different activity that God has in mind now. Yeah, because yeah, so the Christian life is community life. Yeah, the the body serving one another, and so yes, yeah, mm. it's a bit bit lesson. So, hey, I got something interesting yesterday in my via email. It's another newsletter I've subscribed um, and alerted everyone to. Um, a conference online, uh, it's in May, three days, called Presence International Association of Healing Ministries. And it says there are more than 70 worldwide healing ministries. They're all combining and you can join them online. And, you know, it's actually who's who of international ministries like Bill Johnson, Francis Chan, Randy Clark, Heidi Baker, Claudia Friedson, John and Carol Arnott. Charlie Agin, Asari, Catherine Granola, Benny Hinn, Michael and Jesse, Jessica Kulianos, Nathan Morris, Mert Tari, Ben Fitzgerald, Suzette Hatting, and so on. 70 of the biggest names. And it's like, you know, each name by itself usually draws thousands. Like, you know, it's a winner. They're the rock stars in a way, like, you know, the big name ministries, and they draw people. And now you've got 70 plus combining for three days like you know if you have three hours rally whatever everyone probably got two minutes to talk you know is this online is it, it it's online and like i've been thinking about this and to me it actually feels wrong it it just like i love all the ministries i mean we've been reading the books and following it as well and um you know receiving blessings from it but right now in this lockdown What's happening there is that God is cutting away all the big conferences. He's cutting away all the big, big uh, venues. And it, it, I understand it's actually cutting out all that kind of ministry because it's big platform ministry. But yeah. like, Do you think that it's a little bit desperate? It, it it's looks, like, you know, we've lost our platform, we've lost our stage. Yeah, like, you know, then you have 70 plus, mm. you know, with Zoom, if you use Zoom, you can have maximum... 30,000 people join, mm. you know, they can actually live stream and whatever. And 30,000 is not, not bad. And they can actually respond a little. So it's a little bit interactive because they want a little bit interactive. You know, you get prayed for individually and stuff like that. But if 70 plus international, the biggest ministries combined, 30,000 would be peanuts. It's a drop in the bucket of what yeah. they're used to. Yeah, but, yeah. So it is a bit yes, but trying to do the old thousand. and stay yeah. with the flavour of that, oh, we've got to do the same thing what we've always done. And, 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 and I also feel like sometimes, you know, with, with the biggest ministries, uh, with the main, most capable people leading, they draw all the, uh, the most committed and hungry people away from the churches and they go there. Mm. Like, you know, so you go to Bethel, you go to this, you go to that. And but what happens to the normal congregation? You know, you're drawing the most committed people somewhere, you're creating a crowd, and you know, oh, great, oh, we had 10,000 people there. You know, that's, that's wonderful. But what happens to the kingdom everywhere else? You, you're drawing the most committed, they travel and they do this, and what, what about on the ground? And 
So it's actually fake if it doesn't come and flows back into the local area, isn't it? It needs to have a local yes. base. Yes, yes. And uh, I think, you know, you could even say that for the last 30, 40 years, Christianity in Australia, that's how it went. Yeah. Like, you know, first the contemporary churches came and they drew people, you know, even locally, the, the churches that have grown, they've grown from other churches because yeah. they often find me something and it's still continuing like oh this is the bees knees church now yeah. and these are the bees knees ministries and so I, we've been running after oh here's the latest trend here's the newest thing yeah and, and you know yeah. like we have global 70 plus international ministries yeah. and now if you get a big number there it makes you for a moment feel a little bit good oh at least you know something is still happening or whatever but really the season right now the future of the church right now, especially in this lockdown, and if we can't go back to a big platform immediately, the future of the church is with everyone individually and smaller groups coming together. It's actually into a house church, home groups. Yeah. That, that's, that's the, if, if that's not happening, there's no future for the church. Well, the future of the church started that way. Yeah. It's, you know, this is the thing is that, you know, it didn't start with big, big... Well, actually, no, I've got to say, yes, it did start big yeah. because it was a big event, wasn't it? 5,000 plus oh, people. And, and for years yeah. in Jerusalem, they were daily meeting and, you yeah. know, by the post, there were 10,000, 15,000 yeah. people there. But then you you have Acts as the church grew daily, God added to their numbers. Yes. You know, you have this whole thing about, and they met in their homes, and they broke bread, and they were, you yes. know, praying for each other, sharing the stuff that they had with one yes. another, and with the apostles' so, teachings. So yeah. for the first few years, they had both. Yeah. They had the big gathering, you know, the the apostles, you know, the, oh man, they were with Jesus, the best preachers, they had that. And then daily they were meeting in the house. And then after a few years, persecution came. Yeah. And the whole church was separated from the apostles, from their big platform leaders. Yeah. They, they were separated. But the small meetings in their homes continued, and the church thrived. Do you know, I, I haven't looked into this in great detail, but it's always been in the back of my mind to have a, have a you know, it was always a thought. That's what I was wondering. In the Old Testament, God set up certain festivals. And yeah. said, I want yeah. everyone to come to Jerusalem, right? Yeah. It was a big event. Yes. I mean, it was like, yes. you know, this day, everybody came. Yeah, so, we, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, and at the temple, in other words, it's the biggest conference on the calendar, right? Yes. And then they went back home. I know that there were little synagogues, you know, scattered around, yeah, you know, yeah. in different places. And they were obviously a little bit of teaching and Torah and all that sort of kind of stuff. But for the main, I think most of the church, the Old Testament church, uh, would have been in their homes, the dads, the mums would have been in charge. Yeah. Of, yeah, yeah. Of, you know, it's like yeah, you know, yeah. um, even Luther had the small catechism and said, you yes. know, dads, you're in charge yeah, of yeah, passing yeah. on the faith. You know, yeah. this this idea that you know the the real vibrancy, the real essence of church is actually more in home churches. And then you have your big events, bring them all together, yeah. have a yay, that was great. Yeah. You've learned something, you bring it back, however, into the local, yes. into your small groups. Yeah. And, and if the, the local groups, if the families are not healthy in God, you haven't got a healthy church. And there's not, you know, like I probably noticed this for years, you know, you have people, they, they like the Christianity side of things and they drop in to church every now and then. Like, in, yeah, every few months and it's a little bit like home and away, you know, the same program <laughs> ones, you know, just like, oh, it's still there, it's part of the fabric. And I always thought, well, you assume that the church will always be around. And now it's not. And now it's, it's closed. It's, it's actually not always yeah. going to be around unless we actually... Maybe maybe this is the thing about discerning the times. Maybe God yeah. is actually saying to, to us all and saying, look, churches aren't going to be around. The way that you see church and the way it's been, maybe we've got to go back to something that is actually more on God's, God's heart for us. Yes. And that is, you know, when you think about the body... It's made up of cells. Yes. And maybe God yeah. is going back and saying, I want my cells to be active and healthy. Yes. And it's time not to have a look at the big picture, yes. but it's now looking at the small. Where are you at with God? And looking at the cell groups or the home groups, the small groups, yeah. uh, as, as a model again, the way that he's done it all the way through. But then it becomes priority of life. It becomes your way of life. Yeah. You're actually sharing the good news with your neighbors. You're actually doing the ministry. And... Like even with the big, big name ministries, whatever, and apostles and prophets, and 
probably even our job, according to the Bible, we are equipping the body of Christ to do the work. Yeah. So, like, and in the past, if you haven't got, if you can't have the big gatherings, there are other ways, you know, in, in the New Testament, they travel from places. You know, mm. you pay a church a visit. Yeah. An apostle would pay a visit or a prophet would pay a visit and then move on and write letters and yeah. stay in touch and start equipping. But the life and the strength of the church was local in a smaller group. You know, when you're talking about equipping, uh, if you have a look at how often Paul actually just went to a place, equipped a few people and then went. Yeah. There was no seminary training. Yeah, it was like, yeah, you know, a yeah, few yeah. important things. You've got the essence. Now go and try and do that. And I think when I sort of think about Paul writing to Romans, you know, here he is, Paul ministering to the Gentiles in chapter 15, verse 14 onwards. He says here, I myself am convinced, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, complete in knowledge and competent to instruct one another. Yes. Right? Yes. So he's so like, guys, you got everything. You've got everything. You've got everything. Put it into effect. Let, let someone else get the benefit yes. out of all of this. Teach, yes. share it. Yes. Stop yes. holding it to yourselves. Yes. And, you know, and where do we do that best? Yes. We do it around, uh, as it's always been, around kitchen table. When you think about it, Holy Communion, yes. what is the essence of church? Communion table, right? Yeah. yeah. That's a kitchen table. Yeah. Amen. I'm mindful of time. Like we went over time beginning of the week. Like well, that's I think right. we, we, we will continue this. I well, maybe we discovered something that in actual fact God is saying, think small again. Yes. Paradigm shift. So yeah. Encouragement. You've got everything that's yep. needed. Yep. That you need to know to be church. Full blessing. Complete in knowledge. So complete in instructions. And, and be blessed and, with that. And it can be quite exciting to yeah. actually realize... Okay, so church is going to be different. It's actually, our church primary expression is actually in the small group. And I'm right in the midst of it, yeah. bringing other people to faith and discipling and fellowshipping and yeah, have, a, have joy in that. We'll work on equipping you for it. <laughs> okay, have, have a wonderful day. Bye, everyone. And bye for now.